Hello everybody. Uh, still talking about the liquid liquid extraction, and now we are talking about the multi-stage um, uh, countercurrent extraction process. And in this video, we are gonna uh, talk about the merit of this process and why we do the liquid liquid extraction or any any mass transfer operation in in the countercurrent regime. Uh, we will see the uh, the uh, equations and the variables that we know and how we are going to use all these equations and variables together. Uh, we will see the goal of these uh, calculations that we are going to do and how we can do these calculations. So first, let's start with the um, uh, with the flow sheet. How how everything goes. So we have the fresh feed here. Um, this is the uh, feed that contains the component that I want to remove. And I have the solvent going from the other side, the very other end, um, which is the first solvent. We can say that it's almost free uh, of the, um, of, from, the, from the solute that I want to remove from, from the fresh feed. So the reason we do the um, counter current uh, extraction or, uh, or contact between the, the two streams is that I want to make sure that I have um, driving force over each one of these uh, stages. So let's say I, I will take a look here. This uh, stream contains a lot of the solute that I want to remove. And this solvent has already passed by many stages uh, and has been loaded with uh, a big amount of the solute. So it's not very, very big access, not more than what we have here, but it's, it's high. Uh, so even though this has high concentration of the solute, it can take some of the solute from here because of the difference in the concentration um, or the difference between the, the equilibrium con uh, concentration and the actual concentration we have. So we have driving force here. Uh, you move to the next stage, you are contacting a stream that has less solute with uh, 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 a feed that, that has less solute than what you have here. So you still have driving force here. Until you go to the last stage when you have a stream that contains very, very small amount of the solute, it has already lost a lot of solute in all these stages. So this, this stream contains a small amount of solute. And to remove this small amount of solute, you need to have a solvent that is almost free uh, from the solvent. That's why you contact this with this stream. So what we, you would see here is that you have over all these stages constant or not constant, you have a driving force that, that enables mass transfer to occur over each one of these stages. Um, and this makes the, the, the mass transfer or the, the extraction process very, very efficient um, in, in this case. Uh, this, this is not only the, the case in extraction, if we do the same in distillation, we do the same in absorption, in stripping, we do the same in heat exchangers. When you do the heat exchanging in a counter current regime, you, you, when you draw the, the temperature profile over the length of the heat exchanger, you see that there is almost a constant driving force uh, over the, the whole length of the heat exchanger. So you are making most benefit out of the, of the system that you are using. Anyways, so now let's see what the information or what are the information that we have. So I know the feed as a, a concentration and flow rate, and I know the solvent as a concentration and flow rate because these are the inputs that I have into the system. So I know them totally. I know one more information uh, that is what I want to achieve from this system, which is the concentration of the uh, liquid stream after I get it out of the system. So this is my target. So I know the com composition, but I do not know the amount. I don't know how, how many uh, or what the flow rate of, of this tree. So these are the information that we have. So I'm, I'm missing this flow rate. Um, I'm missing this flow rate of the solvent after doing the extraction. And I don't know the composition of this uh, this solvent after getting out of, of the process. So this, this is... Uh, Kind of, I, I have now uh, three equations or, or three, uh, three, uh, uh, four variables. I'm, I, don't, I don't know four variables. The the composition of the three components here. I don't know the flow rate here and the flow rate here. So I, if I know two of these composition or, or the composition of two components here, so I'm, I'm okay. So these are two variables. Uh, this is one and this is one. So I need four equations actually to get this problem solved. Um, but but actually, I, I, I forgot something. When, when you do the calculations, you would, you would notice that all the information that we know are from this side and from this side. I don't know any information about the intermediate streams between the stages. And that's why the first thing we will do is to do 
uh, overall material and and energy uh, uh, component and and uh, overall material balance over the whole th the whole system. So this is what I just mentioned. We have four uh, unknowns, so we need four equations. So the equations that we have are the overall and component material balance on the process. So the the overall material balance says that L node and Vn plus one equals Ln plus V one. These are the inputs and the outputs. We will call this equal M. We'll see M in 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 few minutes. Um, you can do the component material balance over two components. So we have here two equations, and this is the third equation. So I have now three equations. Uh, so I'm missing one more equation, and this equation, uh, or, or the information that is missing, is that this stream is coming out of a stage, then the Y uh, or V1 must lie on the uh, equilibrium envelope uh, because, because it's coming out of a stage. Um, so this is what we are going to do now. So let's see how we can represent this on the phase diagram. So let's go back. We have all the information that we know here. It's the N plus 1 L node and Ln. So I know these two as component uh, compositions and flow rates, and I don't know this as a composition only. So these are the information we know. And the first step is to get the, the information that I, I, I haven't uh, got yet, uh, which is the flow rate of this and the AV uh, v, v1, the, um, the, the composition and flow rate of V1. So uh, I know I know this, I know this. So this 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 equation represents two straight lines on the uh, the phase diagram. Straight line that uh, is connecting L node and Vn plus one, and M is gonna be the result uh, in between. Um, and another one uh, it connects Ln V1 and M is in between. So um, we will see that in in few seconds actually. So uh, I the, the information that I know that Ln and Vn plus one or V1 must be on the on the envelope. So so I know that uh, V V1 should be somewhere here. I don't know exactly where, but this is what we're gonna know now. So let's draw the first line that we we know totally. I know that this is the operating line L node Vn plus 1. And I know that I can locate the point M on the line because I know the amounts. So from the lever arm principle, I can tell where M is. And by doing this, I got the point M. This should be M, it's not M1, it's M. So um, I know M lies also on a line that connects Ln and V1. So I can, I can connect Ln M1 and cut this line here, the the uh, the extract line uh, in V1. Uh, so I now got the composition of V1, which is the first output. And from the lever arm principle uh, and the dist from calculate or measuring the dist the distances here, I can get the amount of Ln and V1 as flow rates. So now I was able, uh, I'm able to to know. Um, or I know all the compositions and flow rates, all the information about the feed and the product to the whole system. Now I want to go to the second step, is calculating the number of stages. Uh, so this is how many stages I want to use so that I can achieve this X attraction to get this X in as I uh, desire. So to do this, we will do uh, the same thing. I will do material balance on each stage. So now let's talk about stage one. I know for information here, it's not for, I know all the information on this side here, and I need to get all the information for, um, in the other side. So I know, um, but I know I know some, some other information. I know that Y1 and X1 are coming from the same stage, so Y1 and X1 are in equilibrium, okay? Uh, so this is the equilibrium relation that I'm gonna use in addition to the material balance um, of, of on the uh, on the whole thing, so the material balance tells me that L node plus V2 equals uh, L1 plus V1. The same thing for the second, for the same thing for the thir third stage. Um, but I'm I'm now writing the equations, and I'm uh, keeping in mind that I'm gonna use the graphical solution to get this done. And the graphical solution uh, requires getting the equation in a way that can be represented on the graph. So what I'm gonna do is to rewrite these equations in a way that would make it easy for me to draw them on the graph uh, or on the phase diagram. To do this, I would rewrite the equations this way. I would make it V1 minus L node. 
I got L node this side, and then it's going to be V2 minus L1. The same for the second and third. You would notice something that's very interesting, actually, that V2 minus L1 is the same here and here. V3 minus L2 is the same here and here. And this means that the, the equations can be written this way, that V1 minus L node equals V2 minus L1 minus V3 minus L2 equals V4 minus L3, and so, so on. So all the equations or all the, the operating lines of all the stages um, are equal. Uh, from from the, the the difference between the V and, and L on the same side is equal. The difference between these two is equal. The difference between these two is equal. And I would call this as O. And you, by thinking of the, the, the phase diagram, I would notice that O is a common point in the operating lines in all the stages, which is very, very important information that we are going to use in, in, uh, in the phase diagram. And now we will do the component material balance. You can do this yourself. I'm not going to waste time here. But this this is uh, going to tell us something that the location of O is the same for all the uh, for all the stages. I'm not going to do this uh, for one stage and then use another O for the second stage. It's the same O, the same flow rate, and the same composition. Anyway, so let's see how to go to the phase diagram and do what we want to do. So these are the information that I know, Vm plus 1, L node, V1, Ln. This is what I got from the overall material balance and the component material balance on the whole system. And now let's see what the operating lines are for the first stage. For instance, it's going to be V1 minus L node is equal to O. And V1 minus L node, it's an operating line that connects V1 and L node. And O is going to be somewhere here in the extension of this line. Or if you if you kind of get confused, put L node on the other side. So it's gonna be, be V1 equals L node plus O. So L node and V1 and O are on the same line, and V1 is in the middle. The same for the last operating line. It's Vn plus one minus Ln equals O. So it's Ln Vn plus one. Doing the difference, O should be somewhere here, and this is the same thing that we mentioned for the first stage. For any stage, uh, an intermediate stage, you would notice that um, the 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 operating line would be the same: a point on on the raffinet uh, line and a point on the extract line, and the extension of this line should cut here at O. So by drawing, uh, this is uh, in, in, in uh, addition to the equilibrium data, of course. So to let's uh, try, try to draw the first line. So the first line would be something like that. This is the locus of point O. I don't know exactly where. But I know that the, the, there is another, another locus that can intersect with this line, which is the last line operating, uh, or, or the last stage operating line. And by, by, uh, by the inter uh, getting the intersection of these two lines, you would find that this is point O, which is the common point in all the stages. So any stage should be passing by, by, by the point O, and then cutting here, and then cutting here. So this is how we draw the operating line. Okay. Um, so this, as, as we, we, we always do, we draw uh, in, in any, any graphical solution of mass transfer systems. You draw an operating line, then equilibrium line, operating line, equilibrium line. And this is what we do even when we draw the stages. One stage going from operating to equilibrium, and the, the, the other side of the, of the stage on, in distillation is from equilibrium to operating, and then operating to equilibrium, and, then, and, and, and that's how we do this. So we draw the operating line, we want to get the equilibrium. And we know that V1 and L1 are in equilibrium, so I'm, I'm going to look for the tie line that passes by V1 and um, cuts here at L1. So this is the first stage. How, how I represent it graphically. <coughs> I now know that V1 uh, and L1 is part of the second operating line. It's V2 minus L1 equals O. So I know L1 would, would, would uh, uh, L1 and O would be uh, on the same line and will cut here at V1. So this is what we are going to get, uh, or I mean, I mean V2. So this is how we get V2. The same thing, I would repeat what I, I did before. I'm, I'm drawing the operating line, uh, the equilibrium curve, and then another operating line, and then the equilibrium curve. You see, it's, it's going to be very simple. It's very, very simple, actually. But the point here is that it's going to get very uh, crowded here. You have many points on the small area. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, and this would, would make the, the solution kind of tough sometimes. Um, I would draw the, the next operating line, and the, this equilibrium curve would tell me a very good information. So I'm, I'm going to stop here, because I, my, my target is to get to this point. 
Okay, I'm starting from here, I'm getting closer, closer, I should stop here. But actually what I found that the tie line stopped here, it means that I have already passed what I want to achieve. And in this case we would uh, draw the, uh, or calculate how many stages by uh, checking how many operating uh, equilibrium curves did I get. So I have one, two, three and half stages. So this is three and half stages to achieve, almost and half, uh, to, to achieve the, the desired separation. Um, you would notice that the, the graphical solution is not uh, very easy and there is a very big chance of getting uh, some errors in calculations or getting uh, a point that's not exactly in the right place, uh, especially when you get here. It's exactly when you do the distillation and you draw the stages in the very far end, in the top or in the bottom. Um, the graphical solution might not be very, very accurate. Uh, so in the next video, we will see another way that would make it easier. It's going to be another graphical way, but it's going to be easier actually <coughs> to do this uh, this drawing. Um, but it's going to be uh, we get it from from what we did here already. So it's not going to be something new um, to us. Uh, one last thing I want to mention in this video is that um, when you do the extraction, how would you decide the amount of solvent that you're going to use? Is it the same amount of the solvent that you use for the feed or it's double, half, three quarters, I don't know. So to do this exactly what, like what we do in distillation, we can uh, get in distillation the minimum reflux ratio. Here also you can get the minimum amount of solvent that we uh, can use. To get the minimum amount of solvent that we can use, let's say that this is the um, uh, phase diagram and these are the information that I got from the overall material balance. and. Uh, we said that this point is uh, got from Vn plus 1 and L node. Um, and as you decrease the amount, of course, if I increase v, uh, the, the amount of solvent, I, I'm going to get uh, better separation. If I, if I decrease the amount of solvent, I'm going to get less extraction or worse extraction. So uh, the, the minimum should be somewhere getting closer to L node. It's not going up to Vn plus 1. So let's say, or let's see what's the condition uh, at which we would say that we have the operating and equilibrium lines are, uh, are, are um, uh, over each other, and I cannot, uh, I cannot do any, any um, uh, extraction, or there is no driving force to perform the extraction. And to do this, we know that this, the this is the operating line, and this is the other operating line for the first and the last stages. So as you decrease the, the amount of solvent, the point M goes down, and uh, of course, as, as M goes down, V1 would, would also go down because we got V1 from the extension of the line that connects LN and M. So if, if M is, is up, then V1 would be up. If M is low, V1 would be low. So uh, if I decrease the, the Vn plus 1 until V1 gets to the point where uh, the operating line would be uh, coinciding with the uh, equilibrium line, which is the tie line. So in this case, the operating and equilibrium lines would be the same thing. And when you try to get them to, to the next stage, you would go back to this point. Then the, the, the next stage would go back to this point. And, and you would be going back and forth on the same line without moving forward till you reach LN. So this is how we, um, we calculate the minimum uh, uh, amount of solvent. So you get M minimum here and this M minimum can tell us what is the Vn plus 1 minimum <coughs> that we can use. Uh, it's, it's not as uh, very simple to get because the, the, the equilibrium data that we have is tabulated data. So you draw your tar lines and, and you would notice that the, the, um, the diagram would contain a lot of lines the operating and equilibrium lines and the uh, the the, uh, the phase envelope and all this information are kind of tough to to draw um, clearly on a same diagram and also in many cases you would see that this this uh, roughing and extract lines are very very close to the um, to the lines of the ternary diagram to the sides of the di diagram uh, and sometimes it makes it even um, more difficult uh, to uh, to draw so uh, anyway so this is how we do the graphical solution for uh, multi-stage um, extraction um, and i'll stop now in the next video we'll see another way it's which is easier to do the calculations or to draw these stages so i'll see you then inshallah goodbye